Although there's a large variation and discrepancy in the training methods of the Empire's Stormtrooper, Shore Trooper, and Death Trooper contingents, there's also significant differences in the armor assigned to these three units. Given that these units are called upon to perform different tasks, with differences in the sophistication and specialization required, it's not surprising that these three units are provided with different armor to assist them in carrying out their orders. In this video expose, I will compare the differences between the armor that is worn by the Empire Stormtrooper, Shore Trooper, and Death Trooper units, and explain why these differences are crucial to the unit's success. Let's start by examining the armor worn by the troopers within the Empire Stormtrooper Corps. Following the rise of the Empire, the Imperial military instituted protocols that prevented customization in the armor worn by its stormtroopers. This represented a change from the individual variation that was authorized in common in regard to the armor worn by the Republic's clone troopers. This allowed stormtrooper armor to be mass-produced, whereby every individual within the stormtrooper corps wore white plastoid armor. However, a stormtrooper's armor underwent minor alterations as the Empire updated the equipment of its troopers with the most modern technology available. Nonetheless, even though the Empire attempted to keep the armor of its stormtroopers one step ahead of its enemies, the reliance upon mass production meant that there were always shortcomings within the armor that could be exploited by the enemies of the Empire. These shortcomings created during the armor's production phase are not present within the specialized armor of the Shore Trooper and Death Trooper units, yet the individuals comprising the ranks of the Stormtrooper Corps made do with the equipment they were given. Stormtrooper armor has magnetomically affixed plastoid spalders, while the gloves of the trooper's bodysuit has surfaces on the fingertips that allow for electronic screen interactions. The helmets worn by the stormtroopers contain a significant amount of electronics that relay real-world information into focused military data that can be utilized on the battlefield. The helmet's visors not only contain polarized lenses that allow for intensified imaging, but also include a multi-frequency targeting and acquisition system that is projected into the lens and creates a visual display for the trooper. Additionally, every Stormtrooper helmet is affixed with a Comtech Series 4 speaker on both sides that provides clear and intelligible sound through their three-phase sonic filtering system. Although each helmet is hermetically sealed, a Stormtrooper's armor does not have its own self-contained air supply. However, while internal scrubbers have a limited ability to filter out a minor amount of potentially dangerous particulates, they do have the ability to attach an external atmospheric tank that can completely purify the atmosphere and environment around them. Given that the Empire's Shore Troopers are elite and specialized versions of Stormtroopers, it should not be surprising that there are a number of similarities between the armor worn by Stormtroopers and that worn by Shore Troopers. Like the armor of the Stormtroopers, Shore Troopers have plastoid armor that is magnetomically fitted onto a bodysuit. The underlying bodysuit is form-fitting and has properties that allow it to control a trooper's temperature. Assigned to the planet of Scarif, the armor worn by the Empire's Shore Troopers is centered around providing them greater mobility within the planet's beach terrain. In comparison to Stormtrooper armor, Shore Trooper armor contains fewer protective plates, which allows the armor to be lighter and more flexible. Demonstrating just how much the armor is a product of their position upon Scarif, their helmets also contain built-in cooling fans located above the visor, as well as covered air filters on both sides of the helmet to prevent the buildup of sand. Further, Shore Trooper armor is coated in plastoid to assist in the prevention of corrosion caused by salt. The armor of the Empire Shore Trooper units also contains features that easily distinguish the unit's captains from other enlisted ranks. Captains are denoted by full blue-gray colored chest plates and lengthened plastoid armor around their hips, instead of the mere fabric as exists for the lower ranks. Finally, the armor worn by the Death Troopers is the most advanced and specialized armor of the three trooper units representing a significant improvement upon the mass-produced armor of the Stormtroopers. While their armor has a plastoid base that is similar to the previous two units, it's further coated with a new spray polymer named Reflex 
that warps electromagnetic signals. This makes death troopers highly successful in operations that demand stealth, as they are much more difficult to detect by their enemies. Death Trooper armor also contains uniquely sophisticated sensory systems that provides these troopers with a high degree of battlefield information, wherein they have complete situational awareness of the environment around them, with clearly designated allies and enemies. Further, Death Trooper bodysuits are completely environmentally sealed. Although their helmet visors have an integrated multi-frequency targeting and acquisition sensor system that is similar to those found within Stormtrooper helmets, Death Trooper helmets have additional image-intensifying active pulse emitters that provide them with an even greater understanding of the battlefield. So there we have it! The differences and similarities in the armor worn by the Empire's Stormtrooper, Shore Trooper, and Death Trooper units. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For multi-frequency targeting and acquisition system...